Welcome to Metrocasting. I'm Doug Farley. We are on the upper campus of Bloomsburg University where one of the segments that we'll present in this episode took place today. You can see why they had the event here as we take a look back at the view overlooking the town of Bloomsburg. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes and ages, whether it be your mom and dad or the neighborhood cop or a firefighter, a sports figure, maybe even a movie star, even a politician. I was recently fortunate enough to be able to MC an event where local everyday heroes were recognized, an event sponsored by some other local everyday heroes, the American Red Cross. You are looking at the faces of some true heroes. Each of these people went beyond the normal call of duty or put their own safety at risk to help save someone else. Their courage, kindness, and quick thinking exemplify the best part of humanity, and the American Red Cross wanted to honor them for their selfless acts. I think that every, every act that these heroes um, performed fits into the Red Cross mission. And for us, it's a Red Cross event that really is focused on them doing what we train people to do. You know, we train all of these CPR classes and send people off and never really know if there are any um, good results from those classes. This is a perfect example of a person who was trained in CPR, AED, using those skills. Um, you know, the, the fires that we attend, we see the firemen doing their job, but we don't necessarily see the other side, you know, from their point of view, what they're dealing with. We're worried about getting people out of the fire and getting them taken care of, but we're not looking at what the firemen are doing, what the policemen are doing. So it all ties into what we do. So I think it's a, a way to recognize them, but also a way for the community to know what, what we do and what they do. Among those honored was school nurse Kimberly Delbo and a teacher, Brent Kelsner, who could not be at the ceremony. Their quick actions brought eighth grade Southern Columbia student Kylie Thomas back from the brink of death after she collapsed from heart failure at her desk during class. I was sitting in my office, it was around two o'clock, and I got a call from the teacher, Kim, I need you up here in room 200 and some, now, click. And that was it, and I'm like, okay, what do I, you know, obviously it must be bad, so I grabbed everything I could, my AED, my emergency bag, uh, and, and went running to look for this room number. Uh, when I got there, I saw the child was unresponsive, and uh, obviously needed to do uh, something, so uh, the first thing I think I did was pray. Um, over the child and ask God for his help and he helped so I'm, I'm very thankful humbled I was horrified I mean it, you know we had just seen her that morning before she got on the bus and she was getting dressed and arguing about oh what am I gonna wear you know I have to have this or that on you know that kind of stuff the typical teenager uh, type stuff and um, I got a phone call then about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon that uh, they had called Life Flight for her, and I was horrified. I just, it, you go from that, that happy experience of, you know, the normal everyday she's going to school type stuff, and uh, when I got to see her again that afternoon, she was laying on a stainless steel table in a hospital, and you just can't imagine what, what goes through your head at that time. During her acceptance speech, Kimberly explained that her training in using an automated external defibrillator, as well as CPR, is what really made the difference. Being trained in CPR and AED use uh, has the opportunity to save a life. And uh, what, what better uh, privilege or experience could that ever, ever be in life than to actually be used to, uh, as a tool to save one's life. So I would encourage everyone to, to do so, um, get, be trained, uh, schools especially. Um, schools are a quintessential place for activity. Uh, many people are in, in there uh, daily, students, staff, uh, extracurricular activities, proms, football games, all, all sport, sporting events. Um, so the, the odds of having uh, uh, somebody come into the building and go into sudden cardiac arrest are probable. There are probably a million things that could have gone wrong that day. There are probably only a handful of things that could have gone right. Um, Kim and Mr. Kelschner and the others out there at the school they did those few things that had to go right. 
they, they did the, the handful of stuff that made the outcome better. Um, had any of those steps been missing, had any of those things not been done right, um, I don't think my daughter would be here today. Uh, I think this would be a totally different outcome. And um, I, I praise them for what they did. They, they did an excellent job. I don't know if I could have done it, but, but they did. By the way, Kylie Thomas is doing well and currently attending the Columbia Montour Votex School. The heart defect that led to her heart failure has been repaired and she continues to improve. Other local heroes who were honored during this ceremony include Craig Reichert, who late one last December night helped his Roarsburg neighbors and friends escape their burning home. My thoughts were to get my friends out as soon as possible. I uh, grew up with uh, John uh, being a good friend of uh, my family and so on and, and uh, it just sort of happened real quick and uh, we had to get them out. It was late at night and I knew they were sleeping. And, and in typical hero fashion, Craig was humbled at being recognized for just doing the right thing. Oh, I appreciate it. I don't really think it, uh, you know, that I'm that, but uh, I, I appreciate the recognition. Also appreciating the recognition, but not feeling as if it was at all necessary, was Danville police officer Gerard Zeidler. His actions during an attempted jewelry store robbery in Danville helped keep store employees safe and helped lead to the capture of the robbers. To be honest, there wasn't a whole lot going through my mind uh, as I initially reacted. It wasn't until I was in the store and confronted with the, uh, the armed robbers that I recognized the, the danger of the situation I was in. It, I, it was terrifying, actually, uh, to think that somebody was actually had the potential to shoot you. It's something you don't soon forget. He told us it was great to be recognized, but that he really was just doing his job. I'm just a guy with a job. It just happens to be a different type of job than a lot of people. Um, they call it duty. I felt like I had to do it. Uh, it's ser serving the community is just part of who I am. It's, it's what I feel I ought to do. That I was just doing my job attitude also flowed through the several police and fire personnel who first reported and then responded to the fire that destroyed several downtown buildings in Bloomsburg and left many homeless. Occurring in the early morning hours of Sunday, October 25th last year, most everyone in the buildings, including Bloomsburg University students, were asleep. Police officers Matt Gola and Tom Pfeiffer were first on the scene and rushed into the buildings to awaken everyone and help get them out safely. Thanks to their bravery, there was no loss of life in this devastating fire. Once firefighters arrived on the scene, Dennis Kuhar, Mitch Lehman, Jason Reynolds and Drew Williams, with much difficulty because of all the smoke and flames, entered a fully engulfed building and found a disoriented person on the third floor. Fortunately, they were able to get that man out. Each of the volunteer firefighters took a turn at the podium to explain that their ongoing training is what helped them to help someone else. I think a lot of it has to do with our, uh, the, the, the guys and gals that I work with and uh, you know, all my other peers that uh, have taught me through the years uh, up till today. There are so many heroes, everyday heroes, and it works right into our mission. Um, the Red Cross teaches people how to save lives and our, the heroes that we had today actually used um, some of their Red Cross teachings to save lives. And we just need to honor them. People like the um, firefighters, I was actually speaking with one of the firefighters' mothers just recently, and she was saying that none of the firefighters ever think that they deserve to be recognized because it's just what they do. But we feel that they do need to be recognized. Um, same with the, the policemen and the school nurses, and there's just so many wonderful people that um, in their day-to-day -day life save lives, and we just this is just an awesome way to um, honor them. Congratulations to all the local heroes day in and day out. The Red Cross chapters, by the way, in the area offer numerous programs in which you can train to be prepared for emergencies like the ones you learned about today. All you have to do is contact your local American Red Cross office.